Hey everybody, happy Sunday. I hope that wherever you are and whatever you are doing, you are having an amazing weekend. Welcome to another Sunday Musing. And I know I say it every week, but just as a reminder, the chicken and the garden update and the dog update and the house update is all in a separate video. So if you are wanting that, it's not here. It's over on a different channel and we have a lot we have a lot of stuff to share with you this week, so make sure you watch it. Today, though, I want to talk to you about the big news this week from the state of California, which has set a date to ban all new internal combustion engine vehicle sales from 2035 onwards. Now, California is something of a, of a leader in the US. Its rules on zero emission vehicle mandates are followed now by a substantial number of other US states. And so when California makes a decision to do something that is related to air quality and zero emission vehicles, there are a substantial number of pretty highly populated states that follow suit. And so today I want to know if you think that California's announcement from the Air Resource Board will actually usher in uh, an increase in electric vehicle adoption or if something will go wrong or change that will prevent it from having that big impact that I think we at the channel all hope that it does. See, California's Air Resource Board has flipped and flopped a, a number of times over the years about regulations when it comes to electric vehicles and zero emission vehicles and air pollution. Back in the late 90s, it brought in its zero emission vehicle mandate as, a, as effective at the beginning of the century. And if you watched Who Killed the Electric Car, you'll know that automakers successfully lobbied the Air Resource Board to effectively water it down and, and, and for a while do away with it completely. In terms of, of where we are now, California has been threatened by by the, the previous administration and until recently by, by Toyota um, and some other automakers, most of whom gave up, but Toyota kind of was the last holdout to try and prevent it from having stricter emissions laws and saying, no, no, automakers should only follow one set of rules, the set of rules set by the federal government. And that was in of itself um, quite a long fight and so, to, to, to cut a very long story short, when the Air Resource Board says it's going to do something, sometimes it does, and sometimes it's persuaded to change those rules or water them down. Now, I've been watching lots of you talking online, and I know lots of you are saying that the regulations that are coming in, that have been proposed, that have been passed, as hopefully will come into force in 20. 35 are too little too late i.e if we want everybody to have the biggest impact on uh, reducing the effects of anthropogenic climate change 2035 is just too late and what we need to be seeing is more investment today in affordable electric vehicles in affordable clean mass transit and lots of other things too there's been a lot of controversy lately about Elon Musk and his admittance recently that he didn't really want California to have a mass electric transit system, a mass rail system. And that's caused some, some stirs, <laughs> as well as Elon Musk saying recently that, that uh, lowering birth rates is uh, more concerned to him right now than climate change, which is interesting. Um, but anyway, that's a different video. And so... You know, there's a lot of people who have a lot of power who could change the regulations for California. But also um, there are lots of people who say that what California is doing right now is not enough. And I kind of I feel that California should be doing more. I think that all states should be doing more. But most importantly, the federal government should be doing more. Now, will this have an effect on the electric cars that you buy if you live outside of the US? I think personally, uh, I believe it will because California is such a large part of the US automobile market, like a 10% of the US automobile market, that I believe that automakers will have no choice but to make more electric cars. Now, some automakers, Mazda, Toyota, and a couple of others come to mind, are going to do everything they possibly can to not make 
electric vehicles or to make continue to make hybrids, continue to make internal combustion engine vehicles. But I think that this rule from the California Air Resource Board, if it is followed through, and that's a very big if, will have a really big impact. But I would love to know your thoughts in the comments below as to what you feel the impact of this will be. Maybe you feel that it's not going to make a big impact. Maybe you feel that, that you know, and, until cars are no longer sold in the state of California with an internal combustion engine, really the jury is out. And of course, that does nothing to talk about the huge numbers of internal combustion engine vehicles that will continue to, to exist and continue to be on the roads for 20 years after that. And how do we make sure that those vehicles pollute as little as possible? How do we empower citizens of California, citizens of the US and citizens of the world to take vehicles they already own and convert them to electric? As you may have seen if you watched 10 this week, the city of Jakarta is just about to embark on a massive retrofit campaign to convert a lot of its city diesel buses to electric. And I think, honestly, I would much rather see those kind of endeavours be passed, um, kind of taken on board by municipalities around the world. I would also like to see government agencies and regulators go, you know what, if we want the world's fleet to become electric we need to actually give people a a really good way of converting their vehicles to electric and right now i don't believe that anyone really at that kind of level is doing any work in that regard and until we make existing vehicles easily convertible to electric i believe that we are going to struggle to reach emissions goals and we're going to struggle to make electric transport affordable and equitable. My biggest fear is that in 10 years time, the cost of electric vehicles will not have dropped as much as we'd hoped. And there will be a, a very large proportion of the population, often disenfranchised people on low incomes, who will have no transport because they can't afford to own an electric vehicle. They've not been given the skills and the tools and the equipment they need to convert their existing vehicle to electric. And maybe the price of gasoline or the costs of the, both the, the financial costs, but also the real world costs of still driving uh, gasoline will no longer be possible for them. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. That is it for today. If you like the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends. And don't forget to leave your thoughts below or in our free to join Discord chat room. It is really easy to do so. There's a link in the video description. And if you do like this video, please consider leaving us a super thanks. It's easy to do and everything you do send our way goes towards helping us make great content. If you haven't already, make sure you've subscribed to this channel and to our other channel, the main Transport Evolve channel, and give the bell a gentle ding to be told when you are ready to watch another video from the channel. Thanks on behalf of the entire crew. Go out to everyone who makes this channel possible. That includes everyone who supports us on Patreon and YouTube, as well as those of you who just watch the video and share it with your friends. If you are a supporter at the Charged Up level, you'll see your name right here on my right hand side. And if you have just joined and your name's not showing, don't worry, it will turn up very soon. Thanks to our self-driving tier supporters, Chris Maxwell, Pedro Muir-Pinchero, Patrick Boyarski, Bennett Elder, Brian Newton, Dave Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Leon, Andrew Martin, Gita Trahota, Brophy Wolf, Tesla in the Gong, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Raging Fellows, Dan Blair, Jim Burness, Chris Centaur, Chris and Michael Johnson, Peter Dillinger and Denny Hyde, and of course, out of this world thanks to our Starman supporters. Anonymous Freak, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Roy Litwin, Joe Bresney, Reed R, JB Fagerback, Russ, Will Graylin, Matthew Drobneck, Kevin Burrowbridge, John Lyons, Andrew Glenn, Paul Conway, Laura Reynolds and Ian. If you'd like to be part of that amazing list, it's really easy to do. You can hit the join button below on Patreon or you can now hit the join button on this channel or our main YouTube channel. And if we get lots of people signing up to support us on Take Two, YouTube has promised us a bonus. So there's a bit of an incentive there. If you'd like to support us there, that is also an option. Don't forget to, you can also head to our swag store. You can send us Bitcoin or Kofi, or you can buy some cool swag if you happen to be coming to Fully Charged Live. Thanks for joining me. And as always, keep evolving. Keep evolving.